morning, everybody. Welcome to the Wadley School Committee meeting. My only suggestion is to move public comment up. Okay. Because I know some people want to go to class. Um, <clears throat> it's nice to see so many people here today. So, first of all, we need to call the meeting to order, which I'm doing right now. Yeah. We're going to review the minutes and approve them from last time. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay. And um, because we have so many guests, we're going to move the public comment up a little bit early today. So, um, <coughs> ask if there's any public comment. Anybody like to? Stephanie? Good morning. <coughs> We, as Union 38 teachers, love what we do. We spend countless hours in and out of the classroom to create an educational experience that will prepare the children of our towns for the future. The district has a history of attracting both new and experienced educators who choose to spend their careers here, and in many cases, make their homes in the towns we serve. We want nothing more than to continue to provide the highest quality of education to our students at Waitley Elementary School. However, we are concerned that if the towns decide not to support a fair and equitable contract, then the quality of education that our children and families deserve and expect will suffer. We urge you to close the gap. And I have this letter signed by all of the Wade Elementary School staff members. Great, thank you. 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 Any other comments? Holly? Hello, my name is Holly Johnson. I'm a co-president of the PTO here, and I'm here as a representative of the Waitley PTO. We would like to express our support of the elementary school teachers getting a fair contract. As parents, we see the hard work our teachers put in every day before, during, and after school. These teachers are this school. They are the reason many of us chose this school. Why should frontier teachers make more than elementary school teachers? They teach the same students. Elementary school teachers are often the reason parents send their children on to Frontier. If a family has a bad experience in an elementary school, they may look outside the district for middle and high school or may choose to choice their children to elementary schools out of district and stay out of district for secondary schools. The elementary schools and Frontier may operate as completely separate entities, but they are all a part of the same district and the teacher's contract should reflect that. We want our teachers to stay at our schools and they need and deserve pay equal to Frontier teachers. We do not want to see teachers leaving the elementary schools. Turnover is not good for our children. The continuity these teachers provide year to year because of the experience they have working together is invaluable to our students. I personally have two children here at Waitley and a freshman at Frontier. I did not hesitate to send my oldest to Frontier because she had such a wonderful experience here at Waitley. I know that one of the reasons she is doing so well at Frontier is because of the amazing job these elementary school teachers did in preparing her for that move. In addition to all they do for students, elementary school teachers do so much for families as well. They hold conferences, exchange emails and phone calls with parents, volunteer at and attend school events. They truly connect with their students and families. Therefore, we were saddened to learn that our teachers do not have a contract that reflects their value and the respect that they clearly deserve. We ask that you do all you can to give them a contract that at least begins to close the pay gap between the schools. Thank you. Thank you. Else? No, I just want to comment that we are we do support our teachers and we do love all the teachers the teachers do here. Um, you know the terms of the contract are the negotiation, but we do appreciate everything that um, you guys do and it does make Waitley a special place. So thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um We'll move on to the financial statements. Great. Uh, there's seven warrants here for signature, totaling $54,044.27. Uh, I did previously send the expenditure reports for the general fund and the school choice fund electronically. 
uh, general fund expenditures remain on track to meet budget, uh, but I did want to inform you that uh, with a conversation with the food service director, she feels like the food uh, school lunch budget can support the staff that are in the kitchen, so we're going to wow. move that off of general fund and onto school lunch, so it'll free up some general fund money. Um, and can then, I make us in there for a minute? Yeah. Um, will that be true next year as well? Uh, we're looking at that as well. I didn't know if it's something while we're looking to next year's budget, do I need to think about having that in the general fund or? I think we should um, put it in there with a note that there'll be discussions with the food service director about whether or not she can continue to carry it. Um, my understanding is that there is a very healthy school lunch balance in the revolving account. Um, and, you know, I mean, it's good to have a little bit of buffer there just in case something comes up something breaks or or whatever um, but it's more than we need to have on hand right now so the hope is that we can continue to pay the staff out of there are other schools doing that or is Waitley um, Waitley right now is the only one there, there's a couple of others that some comes out of school lunch and some comes out of revolving mm -hmm. some of Mary's salary comes out of school lunch some of it comes out of revolving at every school is different mm -hmm. um, but to fully fund, you know, your staff and So great. what were the changes? What made it possible? Um, I think it's historical. I think there's been a buildup in that revolving account for years, and I don't know that Mary can pinpoint exactly what mm -hmm. it's related to. Mm -hmm. um, but we are looking at this year's numbers really closely to make sure that we're going to be able to maintain that through. Okay. Um, and yeah, because I know right now we're running at a little deficit. Just for, yeah, the, just for the year. The beginning of the year is always hard for each of the schools with the school <coughs> lunch program because you're buying so much to stock up to start things and you know there's typically additional expenses. Mm -hmm. um, there's some collaborative fees that she has to pay to be able to get the group discount pricing and we have to pay those up front um, as well as some fuel costs and things like that that are associated with running the kitchens at the different schools. So um, we're at a very small <coughs> deficit right now for this year, but that's going to shift. We're forecasting right, because the, the the sales are online compared to last year mm -hmm. in order to show a profit. Our, right. Ours aren't. They're not. Our right. numbers are, are just not. your expenditures are high right now. Mm -hmm. She's not concerned about your sales. Is my she, she didn't mention that we are serving quite a few less hot meals than we did last year. So we uh, are going to adjust things after. Christmas and uh, follow the other schools lead and give uh, kids the option of pizza every day. Yeah. Not that we want them to eat it every day. Bread <laughs> and cheese would be a chicken finger. My <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll see if that increases our, yeah, our numbers. So we want to be careful in the budgeting for next year. Yeah, we don't. This, this we we one need to thing look right closely now. at mm -hmm. whether or not it can be sustained. But yeah. for now, this year, in order to kind of shift things and get things in the proper places and um, it'll allow us to take something off of school choice and put it back on the general fund which helps build up your school choice reserve which is always a good option. It's just surprising because Waitley is the smallest school and we were always told it was hardest to cover our costs because of the labor costs. Or yeah I think it's from past you know revolving funds that have carried over year okay. after year and you, know, you can't it's not recommended by any of the government audits that Mary goes through to carry a large balance yeah. in your school lunch accounts. So. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, anything, any questions? Or anything? Do you see anything any on the budget that we have to worry about at all for? For like, this year? For this year. No, and, uh, this year it looks like we're on track. Yeah, and Chrissy and I have been working together if there's something that comes up to kind of move money around if we need to or figure out how we're going to pay for things that maybe weren't thought of in advance, but it's nothing that's you know, been a huge impact. In other words, we didn't get any new students in that we have to give extra stuff to. Um, and then we just a comment that we started the uh, budget planning for next year. That is, uh, we'll meet on Friday, Chrissy and I, to go over that with the rest of the team. And um, just continue moving through that process mm -hmm. in the next few weeks. So our next meeting, we'll talk about budget. Is that right? Yeah. In January? Yeah. Okay. Great. Um, school improvement. Mm -hmm. 
You have that in front of you. Mm -hmm. um, and if you, if you remember last year's plan, this one is very similar. Um, last year's plan, I think we approved it in March. So it was, it was sort of a work in progress. A lot of that was due to my being, being new. Um, the, the major change is the first goal. Um, educators at West will continue to cultivate a culture of equity, excellence, and high student engagement. The objective, our entire school team will develop common understandings around best practices for instruction. Um, is this a new objective or? That one's brand new. Okay. Um, I don't know how, how detailed you want me to get in my description. Why was that one added? Um, just based on my observations from last year about uh, our own needs here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we spent a lot of time in uh, early release PD last year looking at student work and lots of discussion around how do we, how do we lift kids to the, the next level. Um, and what came out of that was a lot of discussion around kids taking ownership over their own learning. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of that addresses, addresses that. Um, also, sort of continuing the effort to get us all on the same page. Mm -hmm. So how do you measure that? <laughs> well, um, so one of the things is consistently um, not only giving the assessments, but also having time with the team to analyze them. And so um, the measure of success on, on that action step would be that assessments are consistent and aligned from grade to grade. Mm -hmm. um, develop a menu of formative assessment options and implement them with the frequency necessary to inform instruction and intervention in real time. Um, the way that that would show itself would be instruction and reteaching that is closely tailored to needs demonstrated through ongoing frequent formative assessment yielding improved results on district assessments. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, all of these are sort of to lift everything and, and when things work well, and I know that they will, mm -hmm. um, we'll sort of see a, a lift in everything. Um, maximize time on learning. Um, and that's, I thought I saw Kim here. She came in at the end. But she um, that's a discussion we've been having about um, the state does, does not have requirements for how many minutes per subject. Mm -hmm. They have requirements for how many, how many hours per year, but other than that, um, there's not so we kind of had to take a look at that. Um, take a look at lesson planning, unit planning, and um, the last one addresses the, the uh, genius hour that, that we've been doing, oh, which yeah. was really the thing that came out of that discussion of wanting kids to take more ownership. And how's that going? Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. How often do you do that? Every month? It is, yep, yeah, every, every Monday, the uh -huh. entire school from 1.30 to 3 works on genius hour. Uh, a little more than an hour, but by the time we get settled and then right. have to pack up, it gives us an hour to work. Are they doing this in their classroom or are they doing it in the gym? When this um, group? They're, each each classroom is assigned three adults, so it's the classroom teacher, the instructional assistant, and then one other staff member, perhaps the counselor or one of the special ed teachers. So we have groups of four to six kids with an adult that we're calling an advisor. And now that things are sort of up and running, the at the beginning of each session, the kids are sort of all together. And then advisors can take them to different spots in the building as needed. Um, we had groups going in the art room yesterday because what they want to work on is um, messy. Um, so, so far it's it's going very well. There was a lot, in the planning there was a lot, of, there were a lot of unknowns and it can be uncomfortable mm -hmm. as a teacher to have unknowns about how things are going to go, but um, I think they're starting to see that that it's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. There's going to be like a science fair kind of thing, right? <coughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I've heard some amazing ideas that the kids are having. Okay. Are they working in teams, right? Or, nope. or they're all, for this first run, they're all doing their own. Oh, we okay. wanted to just work out the, the logistics, and then we were thinking that if if we find success in this, and the kids <coughs> enjoy it, and they're engaged, yes. and 
the time is being used wisely, then the next round that we do, we may let kids work in groups within the same grade or even cross grade if we find mm -hmm. kids who are interested in the same thing. Some of that has, has happened sort of organically. The, um, in the lower grades, they're working more on themes. So in, in first grade, their project had to have something to do with the sky. So it could be airplanes, it could be birds, it could be the solar system, you know, mm -hmm. so there are a lot of things. So a group of kids wanted to learn more about the solar system. Um, the fifth graders have been working on solar systems, so they went down to answer questions for the, the first graders. So um, it's those kinds of things that I'm hoping will grow organically throughout the process. That's great. Okay. And who, who was involved in putting this together? Uh, I put it together with help, <laughs> it together. No, with help from the instructional leadership team and mm -hmm. then um, discussion with the school council. Okay. Has there been a, there's been a school council meeting? And right now after we did this work and now we need to have an election um, because at first when we, we had looked for people interested, we didn't get really anybody raised There's one opening, right, and a couple people there, yeah, interested. There, yeah. So if anyone Quite a few, would like to be on the school council? Well, I, I think we got six people who oh, are. Oh, so now we're running? Right? Now the PTO has to awesome. figure like out some way. Yeah, that's awesome. Some way to. Um, Succession planning. <laughs> that's right, so that's why I'm, tr I'm trying to get us on a rotation so that every year we will be replacing mm -hmm. one person. Great. Okay. Thank you to all those people that are running. Um, okay. So we need to vote on the school improvement plan. Any other questions? Make a it motion. worked last year. I'm sorry. No, go last ahead. year. So <laughs> let's keep up the good run. It did. I'll make a motion to accept the Whitley School plan Improvement Plan for 2018 2020. A second. All in favor? Okay. Um, now we need to, do we need to discuss the collaborative? Or I mean, I'll just give a brief overview. So the collaborative <coughs> is, in, has, in, the two people who request to join, or invited two people to join, but in, uh, Worthington and Gateway Regional have asked to join the collaborative. I think they were once part of the collaborative and left, and now they've come back, but. <coughs> At least one of them, definitely. I Maybe both of them. Well, Worthington was part of Gateway and then split yeah. off. So yeah. maybe when Worthington maybe was part of Gateway, they considered so. it part of <clears throat> Yeah. So um, anyways, it has to take a vote to change the membership to invite them in. And then the other thing is that they are increasing the fees for non-membered schools to use the collaborative Sabbath collaborative services. I think it's like five dollars more. Mm -hmm. So um, it was up to twenty percent more, now it's up to twenty five percent. Is it twenty percent or twenty? Yeah, 20% 20, 20 yeah. to 25%. Yeah. So most everyone is a member of the collaborative, and so that's kind of obviously the, the change in fees is trying to uh, push that. Is there anything else in there, Marina? There was one thing about um, a liaison from the state. I think it used to say a member, and then they changed it to a liaison. It was just the wording. Nobody ever comes to okay. meetings. Okay. So, so, any other questions or discussion? We kind of talked about it it's last time. It's, it's, it's pretty straightforward, yeah. nothing so. dramatic. I'll, I'll, make, sign I'll make a motion for Katie to sign the uh, approval <laughs> from Waitley and. For the school committee. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. second. All in favor? Thank you. Reports, any updates on the capital projects? I did remember the sprinkler. I looked at my notes about the sprinklers when I found out it was email. It was just that they were done. Okay. And that they were slightly over budget, we think, but I'm not sure. Okay. Do you know how much over budget it was? Off the top of your head? I don't. Okay. But the town took care of it. Yes. Yeah. And then I know that the Energy Committee was looking at the skylight and they were trying to we connect We had lots the of two. people standing in the cafeteria looking up. <laughs> I'm assuming they were looking at the 
So it Skyling. seemed like they were going to try and work it into that project if they could, and if it doesn't get accepted, then we'd have to figure it out. Was it leaky when they were looking at that? <laughs> they, were not, they didn't come on a rainy day. Um, a parent asked me yesterday um, how sure we are that the, the roof over the cafeteria is structurally sound. Mm. Um, because it's the only spot in the building that holds snow and then takes the snow that falls off the roof above it. Hmm. Well, it's been there since day one, the roof that's been there before the metal roof. So it took care of all that snow over the years. And and then when they strip, I'm pretty sure they strip, I'm gonna correct myself, but I'm pretty sure they stripped the roof before they put the metal roof on, unless they went right over it, which is, can't remember. Hmm. But there again, if they found, if they stripped it and they found anything underneath it, they would have fixed, if they saw anything structurally, you know, or, or pl Could rotted plywood or something. I mean, I can ask, I can ask, but I'm going to assume that when yeah. we get an engineer to do the grip, when we yeah. have the, that one ridge line going into another is going to be architecturally designed to handle the flow of snow and whatnot. The reason it was brought up was they, he cited some incident at Sundown. Oh, but yeah. That's Sundown that was, was a whole different totally different thing. They, that's a whole different mess. But From the district ago. is well aware of what yeah. happened at Sunderland, so That's it's be good for them to. And I was here. Sure. I was here that, that night when we were trying to, between the fire department and school committee members, trying to get the snow off our roof at that time before we had a metal roof, and uh, we felt this because it rained a, a lot on top of like we just had two feet of snow, mm -hmm. and and we didn't have any problems at all. I mean, we got some of it off, but it was it was pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Pretty hard, there was a big group of people here up on the roof Getting showing. Getting it off this roof. All the roofs, yeah. all the roofs at that time. You know, we were afraid just like, we were worried that something was gonna happen to us, but it never did, mm -hmm. you know? Sunderland was probably one of those fluke design things or whatever it was. I, I mean, I don't, I, know the, I don't know the making point, I don't know the details, yeah. so no, but there was a, it was an engineering flaw. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> we might be good revisit just to make sure everybody's sure. safe. The other thing is, uh, did we have any problem with water coming in any of these classrooms over here? Nope. I didn't even look out back to see how close the snow is from all the snow that we had that fell down. Was it removed? You know, sometimes when we have a lot of snow against a building, that we have somebody coming in and remove it so we don't have any backup coming in the steps into the doorways there and stuff, so. Just the, the walkway, or are you talking like Along come and take edge. snow and move it yeah. somewhere else? I didn't look no, out there today, but the, that, the that's The concrete landings on each side of it, from the classroom exits to the outside. When yeah, snow Dan, goes on, yeah. them, if it's not clear, the water backs into the classroom. And so if he doesn't, Dan clears them, but he's just, that was a problem from years ago as well. Yeah. So. And I think Dan's aware of that. Yeah. So. I don't really have any other updates. Any other comments? You, you may notice that the font is getting larger. Yes, my <laughs> eyes. Oh, well, I'm all for that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> we have a new staff member. Um, last month, we were finally able to get Yay. our evening custodian. His name is Jason Potts, and he uh, works during the day uh, in another school system, and so he's familiar with the inner workings of the maintenance of the school, and uh, it's great to have him. Especially, you know, we had a we had a science night here the other night, mm -hmm. and in between when Dan left for the day and when people were supposed to come, we had a an unexpected snowstorm. <laughs> it was more than what we thought. So mm. having someone who was able to, to clear that for us was great. Um, and then we sort of already talked about Genius Hour, mm -hmm. but there's a little update there. Um, we had an awesome science night, speaking mm. of the event that was the other night. Um, a, a man Sounds showed like up with, like, Jimmy must have best, told you all about it. Well, the best turnout we've ever had for any event. Oh, really? That's yeah. Cool. And I heard really good things. Yeah, I think at, at some point parents were going to just ask me to stop emailing about this event. <laughs> we wanted to make sure that we got the word out. Um, and it worked. And I was a little worried that as a result of the, the storm, we might lose 
some of our folks mm. who had signed up, but we had we had quite a crew here. Um, and there's a man who has who has this. Um, this operation he calls Playful Engineers, and he goes to different schools, um, libraries, places like that, and he brings just massive amounts of, he's got lots of bins, and they all have stuff in them. Um, dominoes, wooden blocks, wooden mm -hmm. blocks with holes, um, string, rubber bands, just it, it, it went across the, the whole gym. And he uh, showed the kids one example of a Rube Goldberg machine and then he set them free going. to and there were tables set up all around the cafeteria so we had different groups of kids working together there was one family in particular that was very into it <laughs> <laughs> your family <laughs> like all of them the, the four. Yeah. um they i were really enjoyed that science camp that the inventors camp. yeah the invention camp it, it was, had a lot of that same it was stuff. similar to that and it yeah. was mm -hmm. it was a lot of um you know a, a little instruction at the beginning but then creating on your own right. which um as i said in my uh, report it works so well with what we're doing for genius hour because it was in that same spirit of giving kids the opportunity to create something without being top down on what it is they're supposed to create um it was great. It was great to have people here. I think having dinner helped. Mm. Having, yes, having pizza. food always helps. <laughs> it's and also one PTO less thing to try and for that. fit in. Figure out, right? Yeah. Because. Um, so I definitely want to have that back again. Um, I think he, it's the kind of thing that we could have it back many times and the same kids could come every time and not feel like they're, they're bored with it. Mm -hmm. um, and then storm cleanup. I just wanted to recognize um, Dan for clearing everything for us. It was, at least for me, it was very unexpected that we were getting as much as, as we did. Um, and also Wayne Hukowski for making sure that our, our driveway and our parking lot are cleared so everyone can come to school and work. Our winter concert will be next Wednesday at 1.30. You guys are all welcome to come. And then the last bit is just, uh, I'd like to take a moment to express my gratitude to district administration, the school committee, and the entire Whitley community for the support we receive, which allows us to provide a safe and successful school experience for all of our students. Sort of just like a happy new year, and reflecting on, on how lucky we are here. That science night, though, it sounds like it was good for the younger kids and the older it kids, was, and it's really hard sometimes to keep the older kids It was. One of the things that, that we need to think about for next time is having an area that is for the really little, we had toddlers, um, and there were lots of little pieces, and mm -hmm. um, the man who was facilitating was Nervous. trying to stay on top of, at one point yeah. I stood guard over all the, all the materials to make sure that little people weren't coming to take little pieces, but... For next time, we'll they'll have their own area. Okay. You can um, superintendent. Uh, mine's a really basic report. I had to email out to all of you yesterday. Um, the two major things that are that happened the last few weeks is that when I gave out the superintendent's award, uh, the Gabe Jones Thompson mm -hmm. was a senior at Frontier. Um, and so who he presented an award at the Frontier School Committee meeting. What, what are the criteria for the award? It's basically looking at academic and overall community mm. involvement and that kind of thing. So mm. I look at the top five or so in the class and interview and do those kind of things. Do you interview them? Yeah. Nice. Um, and yeah, so he was, he's an impressive young man. Mm -hmm. so Is he a fun. senior? He's a senior, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, yeah, as you just... Is he from one of the elementary schools? From Sunderland, yeah. Sunderland. All the way through, yeah. Great. Right. And so, just impressive. So, um, and then the other thing going on is obviously negotiations, as we saw <laughs> earlier. Um, what, what, I think we're making progress in negotiations. Obviously, the teachers are, are looking for a fair and equitable contract, and the, the current offer on the table is a, is a is public knowledge, and it is that is more generous than what the Frontier got, and it begins to address the gap. And so, um, we'll talk about more in executive session that the, the breakdown and that kind of things but um, I think we're I think we're 
we're listening, but mm -hmm. we also have to be conscious as the budgets have to move at a, at a rate in which towns can afford. So right. um, it's just commenting on that overall, but um, I, we're optimistic that we'll get to a resolution soon. Okay. And um, but the other things that I'm working on is, is just to continue. We started the budget process, um, meeting with the principals. Um, we also, I haven't really dove into it. I just started the conversations. We're talking about creating a Union 38 um, agreement. Um, the Frontier Capital Subcommittee met last night regarding the projects that are happening there. But that's just a lot of, it's taking up a lot of time due to, um, it's kind of our first time through with, the, with um, Shelly and I and with Bill, these big hundreds of thousands of dollar projects mm -hmm. and having to get outside things and the bidding and all this other kind of thing. We currently have a bid going through FERCOG for that and that kind of thing. Um, we also have the capital projects for each town um, have been, Wheatley's is in draft form, it's due next week. Um, so we're, it's just about there to be ready to submit that we discussed at the last meeting. We're still discussing PD and the early release at the administrative level um, to figure out what we want to put forward for next year. And I'm still in that new superintendent <laughs> induction program. I have to mention it because it is, <laughs> they give me lots of homework. Um, <laughs> oh, <poor> you. <laughs> but it's, it's, you apply it to your job, so. Mm -hmm. so. Um, so what's the discussion around early release and professional development? So as you know, Anything? we talked at the, so we said at the top of the, at the joint meeting that we were, um, we're looking about what we're trying, what we're doing now, mm -hmm. how we can change it, and what the ripple effect on that change is in the sense of, you know, how many hours of PD do we want to be giving? How do we want to deliver it? What's, mm -hmm. What do we like about the current model? What's broken about the current model? And so there'll be surveys and stuff coming out shortly on mm -hmm. that as well. So the idea is that we have to have that prepared for the April meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of, that's our timeline, but we're discussing okay. it. And um, as you know, some of the different parts of it are, it's, it's loaded on different things because people have different opinions about different parts of mm -hmm. it. But I will say mm -hmm. that the, what I, you know, I'm keeping my eye on the goal is that the progress we've made with the professional development has been the most progress I think the district's made in years um, because we have the time. It's just a, how do we coordinate that time so it affects mm -hmm. students and families in the, in the most opportune way. So you know, there's no magic, Wait, no magic know, around it, meaning there's something's going to have to give. In regards to that, are you thinking of keeping at the same time, like the 130? for having fewer days but starting so the different ideas that are being thrown against the whiteboard right now is whether or not to do some more half days with less less number less of days often. you know mm -hmm. less often the idea of the half days is that the elementary schools that one of the problems we have is that within an hour and a half if we want to get grade level team meetings together good morning lately elementary school students and staff we are your announcers today I am Hyper here with Joey and Ellie. Today is Tuesday, December 10th. The weather will be cloudy with, a sh with shower showers later with a high of 50. Lunch today is burgers and baked beans and fruit. Please stand for the porch. Our first leaders today in kindergarten are Liam and Jojo. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The most common spoken language in the world is Mandarin. Mandarin, a language of China. Here is how to say good morning in Mandarin. Yao Hung Hao. Here are some other ways to say good morning in Spanish. It is Buenos Dias. In, in Russian, good morning is Dobro Da. Thanks and have a terrific Tuesday. <laughs> All right, so I was okay. I was saying that the, you know, some of our good professional development is getting other um, grade level or close to grade level teachers together to mm -hmm. discuss practice and to compare what they're doing, um, level of assessment, you know, so that we do have consistency across the schools. But when we have the trans, when teachers have to close out a school day, pack up and go to another building, 
you, you lose a half hour of that time. So it's, you know, that's one of the things in the, in the model that, you know, we want to address to some level. Um, but at the same time, you start doing half days, and then you start having the child care issue for families as well. Mm -hmm. So um, it's kind of a balance of the two. You know, I don't know. Um, I don't know where we're going to end up, but mm -hmm. I, we're trying to look at a, probably a blend mm -hmm. of things where we're kind of aiming now, but um, we're still getting input and that kind of thing. So who's we? Is it Kim? Who's we? Um, right now, the leading the charge is uh, Sarah Kim and myself. Okay. So they're kind of the leaders on the. And educational it'd be great program. if you could involve parents in okay. some capacity. That's why I said we're going to do a survey okay. out as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, is that it? For, that's that's it, it for, for our regular meeting. So. That's I'll correct. A, I'll make a motion to donate executive session. session. Okay. And second. Roll call. Katie. Morning. Yes. Bob. Yes. Great. Thank you, everybody. And it will we'll not be returned. Yeah, we won't be returned. We know that. No business afterwards.